dear students welcome back to our class in the last class we have discussed about some daily life situations where we have seen a change in one quantity brings change in another quantity also we have discussed about direct proportion in detail now let us recall what we have studied about direct proportion in the last class we have seen that two variables are said to be in direct proportion if they increase or decrease together in such a manner that the ratio of their corresponding values remain constant that is if x and y are two variables then x by y is equal to k where k is a constant and it is a positive number now can you tell me which of the following are in direct proportion area of cultivated land and crop harvested the number of workers on a job and the time taken to complete the job cost of banana and the number of bananas you buy time taken for a fixed journey and speed of the vehicle height of the pole and the length of its shadow observe this carefully yes you are right examples 1 3 and 5 are in direct proportion then what about examples 2 and 4 let us see in these two situations also you can see that a change in one quantity is bringing out change in the other but here when one quantity increases the other quantity decreases okay in today's class let us discuss more about such situations now let us move on to the first situation situation 1 six builders can build 10 houses in 30 months how long would it take for 18 builders to build the same number of houses here will they take more time or less let us put it in a tabular form and check yes from the tabular column we can see that when six builders are building 10 houses in 30 months definitely 18 builders can build the same number of houses that is 10 houses in lesser time that is when we have more persons to work we can do the work faster now look at this situation situation 2 six pipes take 30 minutes to water the field how much time will it take to water the field with three pipes again let us put it into a tabular form here will it take more time or less yes you are right when we have three pipes instead of six the time taken to finish the work will be more dear students in our daily life we can see many such situations where increase in one quantity brings a decrease in the other quantity or a decrease in one quantity brings an increase in the other quantity can you list some more such situations let us see here are some more examples speed of the vehicle and time taken to cover the same distance number of pages you read in a book and the number of pages left to read in the same book next one number of workers and time taken to complete the same work here is an activity for you do it yourself write 
5 more such examples or situations where one quantity increases and the other quantity decreases. Now, let us see how we can find out the missing information in the examples that we have seen previously. To do this, we have to learn about another concept of variation that is inverse proportion. So, today let us learn about inverse proportion. Look at this situation given here. Arun wants to go to his friend's home. He tries different modes of travel. Walking, running, cycling and he records his speed and the time taken. The observations are given in the tabular column. Situation 2. Rani is reading a book and while reading she is counting the number of pages she read and the number of pages left to read. Her observations are as follows. Look at this table. In both the cases we can see that an increase in one quantity led to a decrease in the other quantity. Now, check carefully. Can you see something more than that? Let us see. In situation 1, let us take the speed as m and time as n. Now, find out what happens to the product m into n. What are the values of mn? Good. In the first column, it is 3 into 30, that is 90. In the second one, it is 6 into 15, again that is 90. And in the third one, it is 9 into 10, which is also equal to 90. Similarly, in situation 2, let us take the number of pages read as A and the number of pages left to read as B. Let us observe what happens to AB. Yes, in the first column, it is 10 into 90, that is 900. Second one, yes, 20 into 80. It is 1600 and in the third column it is 30 into 70 that is 2100. Yes, now I hope that you are able to find the difference. Correct. In the first situation the product Mn was same, it was constant throughout. But in the second situation, it is not the same. So, now we can say that the quantities m and n in situation 1 are in inverse proportion. Now, try to tell me when two quantities will be in inverse proportion. Very good. Two quantities are in inverse proportion when the product of their corresponding values are equal. So, now we can conclude as two quantities x and y are said to be in inverse proportion if an increase in x causes a proportional decrease in y or vice versa in such a manner that the product of their corresponding values remain constant. That is, if x y is equal to k, where k is a constant, then x and y are said to be in inverse proportion or 
they vary inversely. Let y1 and y2 are the values of y corresponding to the values x1 and x2 of x respectively. Then we can say that x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2. Also note that when two quantities x and y are in inverse proportion or they vary inversely, they can also be written as x proportional to 1 by y. Now you have something to do on your own. Do it yourself. Check whether the examples that we have taken in the beginning of the lesson are inverse proportion. Second, list some more examples of inverse proportion. Now come on, let us solve some problems based on this new concept. Are you ready? Observe the following table and find if x and y are inversely proportional. Look at the table. What are the values of x and y? Okay, good. What do you need to do here? Correct. To find whether x and y are in inverse proportion, we need to find the product of x and y. Let us do that. In the first one, the value of x is 100 and the corresponding value of y is 60. So, the product xy is equal to 100 into 60 which is equal to 6000. In the same way, let us calculate the remaining. In the second one, xy is equal to 200 into 30 which is again equal to 6000. Next, 300 into 20 which is also equal to 6000. And the last one, 400 into 15 which is again equal to 6000. Very good. So, the value of xy is 6000 in all the cases. That is, it is a constant. So, now we can say that the variables x and y are inversely proportional. Now, try to do the following on your own. Two tables are given for you. Find out whether x and y in each of those situations are in inverse proportion. Now, let us move on to some daily life situations where we can solve the problems using the concept of inverse proportion. Let us start. Example 1. Six pipes are required to fill a tank in 1 hour 20 minutes. How long will it take if only five pipes of the same type are used? Solution. Let us construct a table with the given information. The number of pipes used is taken as x and the time in minutes is taken as y. When we have used 6 pipes, the time in minutes is 80. That is, in the question it is given as 1 hour 20 minutes which is converted into minutes. How do you convert hours into minutes? Yes, 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes. So, 1 hour 20 minutes is equal to 60 plus 20 that is 80 minutes. 
Now, we have to find out the time taken when we use 5 pipes. Very good. Now, you started thinking less the number of pipes, more the time required to fill the tank. It is clearly a case of inverse proportion. Now, we can write that x1 into y1 is equal to x2 into y2. Here, x1 is equal to 6, y1 is equal to 80 and x2 is equal to 5. We need to find y2. Therefore, we have 80 into 6 is equal to 5 into y2 or 5 y2 is equal to 480 which gives y2 is equal to 480 divided by 5 which is equal to 96 minutes. Can you convert this into hours and minutes? Good. 96 minutes is equal to 1 hour 36 minutes. So, it takes 1 hour 36 minutes to fill the tank using 5 pipes. Let us move on to another example. Example 2. If a box of sweets is divided among 24 children, they will get 5 sweets each. How many sweets would each one get if the number of children is reduced by 4? Solution. As the number of students increases, the number of sweets that each student gets reduced. Or in the other way, we can say that as the number of students decreases, the number of sweets each student gets increases. Clearly, this is a case of inverse proportion. Then, we can say that x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2. And here, x1 is equal to 24 and y1 is equal to 5. Now, what is x2? Yes, in the question, it is given that the number of children is reduced by 4. That is 24 minus 4, which is equal to 20. x2 is equal to 20. We need to find out y2. Let us move on. 24 into 5 is equal to 20 into y2 which gives 120 is equal to 20 into y2 or 20 y2 is equal to 120 and y2 is equal to 120 divided by 20 which is equal to 6. Hence, each student gets 6 sweets if the number of students are reduced by 4. Dear students, I hope that solving problems based on inverse proportion is easy for you now. Let us recall what all we have discussed today. We have discussed about some situations in which an increase in one quantity led to a decrease in another quantity. We have seen that variables x and y are said to be in inverse proportion if the product xy is equal to k where k is a constant. Also, we have learned to determine whether the two given quantities are in inverse proportion. Also, we have solved some simple and direct problems on inverse proportion. Here are some problems 
for you to try on your own. First one, a car takes two hours to reach a destination by traveling at the speed of 60 km per hour. How long will it take when the car travels at the speed of 80 km per hour? Next one. A batch of bottles were packed in 25 boxes with 12 bottles in each box. If the same batch is packed using 20 bottles in each box, how many boxes would be filled? Now I hope that you are clear about the concepts of direct and inverse proportion. You can try to find out many such situations in your daily life where we use these two concepts to solve problems. With this, we complete the chapter direct and inverse proportion. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you. Have a nice day.